So this was the iceberg, huh? I kid, I kid, but Titanic murder of the Permian? Really? How big could it be? It was a terrestrial animal in the Permian- Ah. Yeah, that is a Titanic for the Permian. At least in its age of the Permian. Its name also means giant potent murderer, but I think Titanic murderer sounds way cooler. So how's it going, everyone? It's great to finally be back. Today, we are talking about Titanophonius, literally Titanic murderer, a large 600-pound carnivorous therapsid from the Middle Permian, part of the Antiosaur family. The Antiosaurids were characterized by their very large canines and pointed, almost saber-like incisors, and they were a large family consisting of some of the largest carnivores of the Permian spread throughout Asia, South America, Africa, and Russia. The largest species even got larger than the later Gorgonopsids, with skulls of the largest Antiosaurs reaching some 80 centimeters in length in adult individuals of some specific species. But today we are focusing on one genus from the suborder Dinocephalia, the Titanophonius, the Titanic murderer of the Permian, a member of the, I'd say, almost overlooked Permian carnivores, the Antiosaurs. They did the saber tooth look way before it was cool. Looking at you, smile it on. Also, just to make note of it, Dinocephalians consisted of both herbivores and carnivores. All right, let's get to Titano. This isn't going to be a super long video, but I think it'll be a good one. Starting off, let's cover some quick history on the discovery of the animal, then we'll hit its paleobiology. The first fossils were discovered by Soviet paleontologist Ivan Yefremov, founder of Thephonomy and science fiction writer. Which, by the way, I love the blend there. I wonder if his fossil hunts ever influenced his writing. If you've listened to some of my stories I've narrated here, some of my real life experiences or places I like have inspired scenes, moments, characters, and sometimes even what they say. Anyway, tangent about me over. The type species of Titano, T. potens, was described in 1938, and another species was named in 1958, T. adamantius. According to Ivan, I suggest the name Titanophonius potenus owing to the fact that the old individuals attained enormous sizes and possessed powerful detention. Adult skulls of the Titanophoeus are around 80 centimeters in length, and the total body length is something around 2.85 meters on average. Like its other relatives, it had saber teeth, and we also have a fossilized specimen of a juvenile individual as well, which is housed in a museum in Moscow, which is the one you see on screen now. The snout of this species was also long and heavy, its limbs and tail were short, and it seems just... From looking at it, and from me, who's not an expert on Antiosaurs, it just almost seems like a more primitive therapsid. And its appearance and stance are somewhat similar to Dimetrodon, just without the sail. Titanophonius ate animals such as reptiles, fish, amphibians, but it also sank its large fangs into large animals, such as this one right here. On screen is a Eulimonosaurus. However, it seems likely that the main part of Titanophonius's diet were the small animals like early reptiles or fish and not the larger, more robust ones. Antiosaurs, meanwhile, as a whole, did in fact evolve to hunt and eat large animals. Some members of this therapsid clade would eat animals up to the size of modern bulls. While the more primitive Titanophonius might not have hunted these larger animals, the larger, more evolved Antiosaurs could, at least more easily, and they did eat larger animals, and they evolved to fill various predator niches. I could honestly do a whole video on the lifestyles, niches they filled, and just the various species in the Antiosaur family. They're an interesting bunch that seem to get overshadowed by Dimetrodon and the Gorgonopsids. Perhaps I will do that one day. Heck, I could even do a couple videos on that. But for now, let's look at the environment that Titanophonius itself existed in. Titanophonius lived in the Guadalupian, the second and middle epoch of the Middle Permian. Now, I'm excited to talk about the Permian. I've covered the Boring Billion, the End of the Cretaceous, and a lot of the Cenozoic, but the Permian, I think, has only been featured in one video, so I'm, I'm excited to revisit it. It's a time period I find fascinating. So get your time machines ready. This is the Middle Permian. The Guadalupian, known in the past as the Middle Permian, consists of three ages. The Rhodian, 
the Wordian, and the Capitanian Ages, and they began after an event known as Olson's Extinction. The Permian has two vastly different periods of animal life. A mass extinction occurred in the middle, so the early Permian and the late Permian are almost completely different when it comes to the type of animals that existed in them. The Therapsids were the dominant animals during the Guadalupian, which is the clay that Titanophonius is in. It is a dinocephalian. After Olson's extinction, there was a period of low biodiversity. Two-thirds of terrestrial life were lost across the planet, and this was one of those extinctions that, to this day, we still don't have a sure answer for why it even happened. It's not like the great dying at the end of the Permian, where we, we pretty much know what caused that one. This one, we have theories, but no concrete answers. And as I said, that extinction did lead to the second half of the Permian having a completely different terrestrial ecosystem, basically, compared to the early Permian. So the climate in the Guadalupin itself was similar to much of Central Asia today, and Pangaea did exist at this time. And the supercontinent was very hot and dry during this period. Desert temperatures could reach as high as 165 Fahrenheit or 74 Celsius. See, when you have a supercontinent like that, getting moisture and into the center of the continent is difficult, which is why they tend to have a lot of desert. This hot world was the one Titanophonius called home. The coasts, though, were not as dry as the interior, and they were actually lush and tropical. Probably wouldn't have been a bad place to have a vacation home, honestly. As I said, the biodiversity was just completely different compared to the early Permian, and life bounced back from the extinction. You had new tetrapods, reptiles, fish, plants, and invertebrates. They all took center stage and remained abundant until that later, that little bitty, not at all major event happened, that thing called the Great Dying, you know, the one that almost ended life on the planet. No big deal. Titanophonius, though, was not around anymore when that happened. It went extinct sometime around 265 million years ago which would be the same time as the turnover from the Wordian to the Capitanian Ages. The Capitanian Age saw a more unstable environment, and there were die-offs and extinctions throughout it, including the end Capitanian extinction event, which was only a prelude to the big one coming about 10 million years later, the Great Dying. Why the end Capitanian extinction occurred is also not fully known or understood. This is sometimes a running theme with prehistory, we know mass extinctions and die-offs occurred in some ages. Why they happened, we don't know. Isn't that comforting? Doesn't that just make you sleep well at night? Well, that was a little intro to the ins and outs of the Permian's Titanic murderer. Unfortunately, as I've said before, when I find an obscure animal like this that interests me, there isn't too much to say on it other than what I covered. I was researching and reading about it, trying to find more information to share, but ultimately I found more about the world it lived in than I did about it. But I thought Titanophonius was a cool animal and that it was worth talking about, and I hope you enjoyed it. This video was kind of more of a rant, but it was a fun rant. I enjoyed it. It felt good getting back into a paleo-related video again. It's been a minute, and I love doing these. And stick around if you did enjoy, because tomorrow there will be a longer video about the dinosaur, Irritator. And tell me what you think about Titanophonius. I'd love to know what you think of it, and Permian animals as a whole. I want to cover this era more, so let me know any Permian animals or Permian-related topics you want to see covered in a video, and I'll put them on my list to cover in the future. Until tomorrow, then, have a good one, everyone, and thank you for watching.